How do you keep up with innovation? There is this way that everybody says that you have to read as much and go into as many possible areas as possible. I'm gonna tell you something that is completely different and it's going to change your mind in terms of what it means to keep up with innovation. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Maslach. I actually am a professor of innovation. I study that. And one of the problems that I personally experience, the same thing as you, is every moment there's always something new that's coming up. And I always feel like I am left out. Because I study innovation, I should be the one that's on the cutting edge all of the time. I'm gonna tell you something that has helped me out a lot. And that is realizing I will never know everything. And that's not the point of what of many of the things that we're supposed to do. I don't need to be relevant at any given time. What I'm looking for instead is an insight or inspiration. And that is different than having to understand absolutely everything. So the natural view that a lot of people have is that you have to go and study as much as you possibly can in many different areas. And in fact, that's just physically not possible. Never was and never will be. Maybe at one point, 10 million years ago, you can understand the current state of knowledge, but I don't even think that that was even possible then. So what do you do? Well, what I do is let things bump into what I'm actually doing. And let me explain what I mean, is that when it comes time that I actually need to solve a problem, then I go and search and discover what that particular thing is. Now, there is a lot of unknowingness that I will never know everything, and that's okay. I shouldn't know everything. Why would I need to know how a nuclear reactor works? And why is that actually important in my day-to-day -day life? That's not important in my day-to-day -day life. What I need to do is figure out what it means to go from here to there. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have to or I shouldn't explore and be curious and wonder about the world. That's how you often get a lot of inspiration. That's where lots of really cool and exciting things actually come from. But at the same time, you have to limit what you're actually going to spend your time on and explore. So I would say, by all means, explore, have fun, but realize that much of that stuff that you're gonna learn is not gonna be necessarily relevant to you today. It doesn't help you out in any sort of way. So another way that a lot of people do this, instead of just, I use the, the, the problem-based approach where if I bump into something, I need to go find the available solution. I don't know all of the available solutions, unfortunately and I could probably get better at that. But another way that, um, and, and I've heard this approach before, and this was done by Herbert Simon, I've talked about him before, and he was, he won the, the Nobel Prize, but also was enormously influential on many different areas of both the sciences and the social sciences. And how, allegedly, how he kept up with things is he just had conversations with people in different fields so he didn't necessarily have to read broadly about everything that was going on. He just wanted to meet up and be curious. So a lot of what we have to think about is not necessarily discovering everything, but it's more about just pondering and being thoughtful about what you choose to go and explore. What you realize is that there's a whole bunch of masses amounts of information that exists and a lot of that information is somewhat redundant in that it sort of overlaps in particular ideas. There's often a basic structure of how things actually work. Many of it has to do with the mathematics behind things, how things actually work. Once you understand mathematics, you start seeing the same patterns over and over and over again amongst many different areas. I've studied many different areas. I've studied engineering, mathematics, um, sociology, psychology, business, many different areas. And there is a basic structure that happens with much of the things that we actually look at because that's the sort of nature that we have and goes way back to several hundred years ago when we had the enlightenment where we started talking about 
how people are more atomistic. Um, and we started breaking things down because we can only see the world in, in, in s certain amounts of way. Um, that's my theory, by the way. That's maybe not necessarily the truth, but you know, there's only so much that we can understand and see the world. There's only basic schemas that we understand the world. Does that mean I'm gonna understand everything? No, not at all. And I shouldn't. It's too difficult to actually spend the time to do that. You're not a robot, you're not a machine, and it doesn't make any sense to do that on a daily basis. So instead of thinking about how you can keep up with available technology, think about what your current life is and think about problems that you're experiencing, sort of moments where you wish that things would go a little bit easier. Instead of looking at everything just go peruse those things where things can get a little better. And then find as many friends and acquaintances that will be helpful along the way and sort of guide you in saying, hey, why don't you think about this? Is this an interesting approach? That's what a lot of scientists and researchers actually do is they use their structure and they, they, where they actually are situated, they, they learn from other people so that they can grow and develop and become a little bit better every single day. And so you never really have to know everything because we're, we can't. But you can know enough in each particular area that you can get by. And so the key is to understand the problems that you're experiencing in your life Think about the solutions about those particular problems and then just start engaging and being curious about some of the potential solutions that actually exist. And if there's something that is a little bit more robust in, in the sense that it seems like it's a better approach and curiosity is, is pulling you in that particular direction, by all means, go in that particular direction and think about how, <clears throat> how it can be applied to many areas of your life. All right, take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.